while investigating a strange feeling presence vibe out in the forest jungle she uh or they uh got attacked by an elephant by surprise and seemingly trampled but when you all her party members that is went to recover the body there was none there um, how the fuck do you get attacked by surprise by an elephant because it was it's just real sneaky fucking amateur out are out here it's real sneaky bro so anyway um the rock also has seemingly gone missing uh, he is nowhere amongst you all and presumably his alcohol consumption has something to do with it for the time being he is not around you guys got the rock that's a good get got the blood you say the rock the rock Dwayne, yes yeah Dwayne Johnson no, this one's just drawn. <laughs> he was pretty fun. Drunk Johnson. Uh, and before... I think they call that whiskey dick. Before Neji asks, um, we can say that he left behind his bag of holding with whatever was in it. Uh, let me look. All that gold. Yeah. Yeah, his gold. You say he left you guys his gold and split it between you two. We'll do that at some point. Okay. Not what I need, need for it right now. Um, so, yes, beyond that, uh, exploration in the forest slash jungle whatever you prefer is they call it both that's what I'm kind of making fun of so um, you guys had investigated on this square right here hex and you were about to go down into it when all of those tragedies befell your party members so any questions about anything before we get into it that was really good. Nope. It's, it's raining here. Can y'all hear that on my mic? Nope. No. No. Just making it hard for me to like hear myself. After I just got my ears all fixed up, now it's raining and I can't hear it because of the metal roof. Right. Okay, so. A little bit of boom. Here I've got an extreme cold warning and it's minus 30. Jeez. Yep. It's going to be fun to working know. tomorrow. I don't even want to know what that is. Yeah, it's not that cold. It's just raining out of nowhere, kind of. Alright, so let me set the stage for you here. Um, as you three, Drez, Neji, and, well, I'll... I guess I'll kind of be playing West by proxy since he couldn't be here. As you three uh, enter into this scene from the southwest over here, uh, the jungle canopy is is clear just a bit, uh, which is giving way to this area of murky pools and kind of a twisting creek bed. Uh, a demolished campsite is sprawled across an island in this shallow bog. Uh, you immediately see two large creatures that seem to be responsible for the demolished camp. Um, and a, an equally large but small in comparison creature uh, just on the bank seemingly trying to fend off uh, these things but not really engaging them in any kind of way, just kind of trying to shoo them, if you will. Um, you can see just past them, uh, 
four shapes, four figures on an island, uh, but you you don't seem to make out just exactly what or who they are at the moment. So, uh, look like half orc. Don't be a smart ass meta gamer. Just have really good eyesight. It is, bright and, it is bright, and the jungle canopy has cleared. My perception is high. Um, so, we'll start uh, with, I guess, you two. I was to say you three. Uh, you know, you can make West do something if you want. But you three over here on the bank. Um, I'm going to unpause it, but I'm about to go like lying around. Uh, what will you do? Dreams. Okay, so how far is it from where we are to where Sir Derwin is? Good. That's a good hundred feet plus. But it's I across, don't suppose it's across that water. One hundred forty feet. Holy shit! <laughs> and we stashed the boat, right? Yeah. Well, All right. Um, so, I mean, I would tell you this isn't the river, right? This is, you're, you're inland a bit. This is just kind of a swampy spot. I would like to, I guess, do a perception check to see if I can tell exactly how deep the water is right here. You could just stick your hand in it. Um... But you can tell that where these lily pads are right here, you can you can walk across as difficult terrain, or it's shallow enough to where you could swim. Um, just past the lily pads, though, like in this area, it is deep, and you have to, you would have to swim. I mean, I, I, I'm assuming do the darker places on the map indicate deeper water? Where the lily pads are, that's where it's shallow. Gotcha. All right, I am going to uh, move. Uh, are we doing like three actions per turn still, or since we're out of combat? Yes. Yes, sir. All right. So I can probably get... I should be able to get somewhere like right around here in two actions. And then if I try to yell across the water is... Uh, is Sir Derwin going to be able to hear me? I would think so. And I, he, assuming you yell loud, he can hear. Um, those things aren't preoccupying him. Uh, sure. Okay. I would like to uh, point and yell, Look out, birds! Yes, yes, well, I do. He, he's, in, he's engaged, like, trying to shoo them off. I was trying to be helpful, just in case he didn't know. Okay. Well, roll a performance check. Just a straight up on your level, DC. Um, he sees you, like, flailing, um, but he can't make out anything you're saying. Yep. Neji. How will you follow this up? 
Ah, uh, sorry, I just seen the minute. One sec. Compelling. <laughs> Stop running from Mr. X and play Pathfinder. Yeah. What is Mr. X? It's the guy that follows you around everywhere in Resident Evil 2. Oh, they said he's playing the remake? I think so. Okay, I'm back. Um, all right. So, um, Chessie, were you able to yell across? And was he? Able uh, to he hear? saw me, but didn't hear me. Okay. But I, um, I, you, you have better performance than I do, so you might be able to get him to hear you. So thirty feet. Let's move him in thirty. I think. Thirty. Yeah. Okay. Uh, first action. I'm gonna move to here. Then to here. Okay. Holy shit. Um, I am 110 feet away. Uh, would I need to? Would it be? Would it, Would he be able to hear me, Mary? If I rolled well, or maybe I should just get closer instead. Uh, I mean, yeah. If he. If you roll well, Tristan. Nice. You know, I'll, I'll just move closer. And, alright. That's all three of my actions. Alright, what, what would you guys want Wes to do? Just move over there? You want him to check these birds with his nature skill? Uh, yeah. Let's have him do a little bit of both. Is he close enough to... can see them so he can move uh, here. he can see him so yeah he can recall knowledge nature on them I want to do that or you want to move again I say use the recall knowledge Um, he recognizes that these are essentially like pterosaur type birds, but he he doesn't notice anything about their behavior useful to you guys. But uh, upon the island. These things are like squawking and flapping and pecking around, and a peculiar keeper is accompanying them. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself, sir, and take some sort of action here? Yes. Sir Darwin Dust Slayer will come and move up and try and use intimidation to shoo them away. Alright. Rolling against them. Probably not that great. Um, yeah, they just kind of cock their heads in a funny way and keep pecking around at the camp. Um, I yell over to the strangers over here and asking them to come help me. Okay. Uh, roll. Like, like, how are you yelling? Are you, like, trying to get their attention? I mean, they're actually... Yeah. You see that they've been looking at you. Yes. Trying to get their attention. All right. What do you, what do you say to them? Then you can go ahead and just speak because they're already trying to speak to you. Um... Yes, yes. Come here, people, uh, lads. I need some help with these birds, these pesky birds. Uh, 
that, I was. That's what you're gonna say. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not very good at role playing. <laughs> I was spread to chesty. Hey, isn't that a cinder claw, cultist? I'll be damned. You're right. Let's kill it. Looks like those birds are doing it for us. Maybe we can just walk away. Well, we still want to see if he has any good loot on him. Yes, absolutely. Good point. Uh, so, roll a perception check there, Derwin. Okay. Yep. Okay. Right, you do not overhear them plotting to kill you. <laughs> nope. We were plotting, plotting to, to kill them. You just wanted to loot. <laughs> but you see that they don't really respond uh, to you. Do you want to say something else and then you have another action to do something? Mm. I don't want to attack them quite yet. Um... Please come over. Um, no, I'm going to hold my shield up at least and try to defend these birds. So if they're not coming to help me, I'm going to have to defend these birds by myself. All right. So what? You raise the shield? Yeah. Excuse me. A plus two on my. I'm assuming you can do that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Boom. So, far to the north, east, um, some half-orc hunters are cowering, uh, or at least covering, uh, away from what is seemingly their campsite. Uh, but with them, a strange companion, perhaps a hired guide, or some hired help is a uh, not a half orc hunter, but uh, another uh, unknown face to you guys. So, right here, Vega. Introduce yourself, and what will you do? You so you're over here with these half orcs. You're kind of hanging back because these things are destroying your camp. So you're not necessarily uh, in any kind of danger, but you do. You see the uh, you see these guys that have approached. You don't necessarily know any of the things they've been saying because you've been kind of out of range. But you see that they've been trying to communicate with. Um, Derwin over here. So I'll ask the half orc hunters I'm with how they want to proceed. Do you know those people over there? Uh, they tell you, you know, that they're just gonna wait this out, they don't know. Um, you know, this is all too much, this is not what they bargained for. You said there's water I can tell is not walkable, or is it passable, or? The water between, um, you know, you guys is, you can swim, but you can't walk, you know. Okay. Well, for right now, I'll just move 10, 15, 20, 25. Unless, you know, you try to jump on that lily pad or something. <laughs> I'll just move over to this edge of the island so I can get a closer look at it. And uh, I'm just going to observe and see how this plays out. I don't know if you guys are good or bad or Excellent. what we're in for here. Excellent. So back to the shoreline here. Uh, how will you guys proceed? Grizz first. Hey, uh, hey, Chesty, I've got a spell that I can um, talk to him from far away, so don't bother wasting any more actions on... Trying to talk to him. I can do it on my my turn. Okay. 
Okay. Do you want to just go ahead and you take your turn now and talk to them, or should I move out there and try to uh, get okay. across the river? Is that is that okay, Mary? I guess he can delay <laughs> behind me. Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll delay and let him go first. Well. So I'm gonna cast message, and I'm gonna try and talk to uh, Sir Derwin, or the, oh sorry, that that uh, humanoid lizard across this uh, body of water. Okay. Uh, what I'm gonna say is, um, we're coming over to uh, to help you out because it seems like you're in trouble, but we're unsure if. Um, you're bad or not. Um, can you prove to us that you're not part of the Cinderclaw cultists? I yell out the fact that I'm a paladin of Toreg. I'm here to destroy these dragon pillars. Uh, yeah. uh, Alright. As, um, as you... Are talking and communicating. This closest creature uh, flaps up its huge wings and comes right over next to you or near you and begins to approach you. It's now, uh, you know, within one step of you, just kind of looking at you. Okay, um, so I guess it's one action to, to, to talk to Logan. Um, I have another action. I'm going to to play uh, play the bird, the soothing song, to maybe uh, calm it down a bit. Okay, so roll performance. Oops. Uh, sorry, one sec. Got that up. It is now just kind of swaying back and forth, mesmerized as you're playing. <laughs> um, what? How long are you playing for? I guess. What's one action in exploration mode? I'm not too sure. Well, I mean, now that you're like successfully playing, I would say you could just like keep doing it as long as you wanted to. You just can't do anything else while you're. Okay, I, I'll um, I'll keep playing just to to keep it from attacking us, I guess, and then um, Drez can go. I don't know, maybe feed it something. I don't know. <laughs> Goblin, or no, let's see. Um, do I have anything that I could feed it? You have rations, right? You probably have rations. Yeah, I do. Uh, I have Is there a way to give it part of a ration instead of the whole thing? Yeah, because uh, one ration is like a week's worth, right? Of food or something like that? Yeah, because it says rations seven out of seven, and I have four of those. So, I mean, like, if I could give it, like... Is it, is it a week? I thought it was just a day. It, it says it has seven charges on it. Mm. So, if I could, like, give it two charges worth of one ration... Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah, there we go. I hit use rations twice. Yeah. So I, I offer that to whatever this pterodactyl is. Okay. Well, uh, so describe how you doing that. I uh, carefully take it out of my pack, and I'm not foolish enough to hold it in my hand to try to let this thing eat. So I hold it out in front of me so he can see it, and I move forward just a little bit. And very carefully, but very visibly, so he can see the food in my hand the entire time, set it on the ground.
Okay. Yo, yeah, then we can get Wes the command animal. Then maybe, maybe we can fly across. Uh, it leans over. It doesn't even have to take a step. It just leans its huge neck over and cranes itself. And slowly, suspiciously, but ravenously, gobbles up the ration in one, one gulp. Do you want Wes to command it? Or try to command it? Yeah, let's sure. do it. Let's see here. Decent. Okay. Uh, he successfully commands it to... What do you want him to do? Um, to allow us on its back and fly us across. Where uh, Logan is. That's, that's what you want to do? Is that, is that what you want to do? Uh, what do you think? I say we want him to command it to be permanently loyal to us for all time. <laughs> I'm sure that's pretty a uh, pretty low DC check, right? Right. So you can command it for one turn. That's what you can do. Or that's oh, what he no. that's what he can do. But you tell me what you want him to do. Um, I mean, I don't know what else to do other than to try and write it. it you is, don't is want that... to tell it to like piss off. <laughs> I didn't want to say it, good, but it's not school is writing it. I want to write yeah, it. I want I mean, to write like it. When, when we are faced between the choice of getting rid of the pterodactyl or having the pterodactyl. All right. So, you want it to you, you want to get on top of it, and it, you want it to ferry you across next next turn. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, let's see here. <laughs> Edgy's in its mouth. <laughs> oh God. It's not that big. Uh, so it listens to Wes and it picks you up and it plops all three of you out over here on the middle island. Uh, and as soon as it does, it squawks and its fellow creature comes right over here and they both seem to be wanting some more rations from you. They are pecking at the ground in a uh, rather irritated manner. Uh, um, give a mouse a cookie. I, since I saw them throw a ration, I will throw another ration, but I'll throw it away from us. Yeah, like towards those trees, maybe, maybe behind you? Across the river? Across the Oh, that's, that's a long throw, man. Roll, oh, no, Lily. roll an athletic ship. Okay. You are a dragon. I'm a cobalt. I'm a little tiny thing. <laughs> oh my god, hero points out. I'm sorry. This... No, it's gonna be there. Oh, uh, okay. Cool. We make a good impression, man. <laughs> Oh, four. You and Neji Even... could like stand on each other's shoulders, yeah. and we could put a trench coat around you, and you could be one whole party member. Oh yes. Hey, okay, soon I'll have wings. Level twenty. For a Durban adult man. Um. Uh, so you toss some rations into the water right here, and they flap off pretty quickly. And they start splashing around looking for the soggy rations. 
uh, giving you guys a moment to speak freely. Why, thank you there, lads. Thank you for uh, bringing those birds away from us. From me. Am I on mute? Oh. You're, you're welcome. Screaming in terror at the talking dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what the fuck is that thing? No, I'm just kidding. Um, so I ask uh, Sir Derwin how he's doing if he's injured. No, I am not injured. I am actually quite good at healing. Uh, you uh, all are familiar with the, um, you know, heritages, ancestries of Galarian, so you recognize, uh, you know, Cobalt. Right, cobalt. That's what you want. Yeah, yeah. Um, I ask how uh, how long he's been in this jungle and how he ended up in this predicament. Uh, I was sent here from the. I forget what cause it was. Uh, but I was sent here to try and find these dragon uh podums. And, and do what with them? Uh, to destroy them. I heard a great evil are, is coming, and a dragon may be coming back. I, uh, I whisper to, to Drez, what do you think of this guy? Uh, we should, uh, we should test him out and see how he does at destroying some of these things considering how hard a time we had last time I agree it seems like he has good intentions we'll see what he we'll see what he can do so you formally invite him into your adventuring party then? probationary yes and um, there is. And do you ask um, him if he knows anything about these half orcs over here? Yes, we ask him. Um, what are those uh, shadowy figures doing across across that island over there? Do you know them? No, I do not. I do not. I I don't know anything about them. Um, let's go find out about them. Or who are they? All right, let's do that. Uh, hey, just just as you guys turn to go see about them, your creature friends return, and this time they don't seem to be pecking the ground. They go ahead and engage you all in uh, some good old combat. Ungrateful bastards! Wow, uh, you were all turning away. So as you're turning away. Uh, if you're doing anything else, you can declare that now and roll initiative in a different way if you desire. No. While I was turning away, I was also stealthing. Okay, so you try to uh, hide real quick. Go ahead and roll that thing there. Can my initiative roll there count for both since it was oh, stealth? Yeah. Sure. Because uh, that was a damn good roll. Sure. So you are unnoticed by these creatures. As you all begin combat, they start pecking at you wildly, trying to find more rations on your persons. Um, starting with. Okay, um, first thing I'm going to do is, let's see, what am I going to do here? Mm, I'm going to do lingering composition and then inspire courage. 
see. Performance check. Uh, what's that? That is success. Okay. So three turns? Yep. Okay, and then uh the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to move back over here. And then I am, what else can I do with one? You can try to intimidate them. Are you trained? I, I'll try and intimidate them with a, a scary song, <laughs> Mary. Um, okay. What, uh, what kind of, how is it scary to them? I'll play like some some heavy metal sounding music. Okay, so just like abrasive. Yeah. And how are you doing that with your uh, loot? With my loot. Yeah, I mean how? <laughs> are you how? Heavy metal? Because it, it's magical. Well, you know, I'm um I'm doing you know I'm 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 banging I'm doing I'm head banging while playing my loot right. And then uh, yelling some some loud noises at him while while I do that. Like how? Like <laughs> These are huge creatures. So. Yeah. Well, I don't know. worth a shot. Is that uh, performance? Definitely is performance. Hold on. Yeah, performance. All right, so uh, you you demoralize them with your uh, screaming, and they are frightened. Sweet, and uh, that's three actions. Uh, Drez, what will you do, sir? All right, so if this guy right here has not seen me, he'll be flat-footed to me. He is. And I am going to... Let's see here. I'm going to strike him with the Cinder Claw Gauntlet. That has not been used once in this campaign so far. What the hell does that do? Uh, why did that not, uh, I had him targeted and deselected. What something. is a Cinder Claw Gauntlet? Is that the one that uh, dropped last on, time? Well, nah, it's, it's been in my bag for like a month when we were still back in the Citadel. I think like the boss we beat right before we got into the, uh, into the portally chamber thing. Oh, that that party of uh, Cinder Claws. Yeah. Good try. Fucking bird. Now he uh, definitely notices you. All right. Uh, so for action number two. Uh, So is, are they immune to all attempts to demoralize or just to Neji's attempts to demoralize for 10 minutes now? I think it's just his. Mm. Haven't we looked at this before? I feel like we have. I believe it's just mine, but let me, I'll look that up. Yeah, to yours. It's just that we looked at this before and, and talked about it, I'm pretty sure. 
and we decided it was just that person's. All right, I am going to also attempt to demoralize. Chill out. Chill out over there. Trying to get us sued, bro. Calm down. <laughs> I stand up as tall as I can and raise my arms above my head so I'm as big and imposing as I can. And then I yell at the top of my lungs. You just yell like, you just yell like scream? Yeah, it's like a primal scream. Okay. Do the primal scream. And this is at this one right next to you? Yeah. All right. It is, uh, ooh, it is successful. All right, and last, come from. <laughs> last action, I am going to get the fuck away from it. All right. So, uh, frightened, yet undeterred, um, this thing just packs right down on your newfound friend, Mr. Dusk Slayer, uh, looking for some food. Um, attack of opportunity. Alright, you can swing back at him. So that's a hit. Oh, my stuff's all set to him. Right, I did not like the character. One hand, now what the fuck? <laughs> Are you a god? Nope. Well, level three hammer, and then I put a proficiency rune on it. All right. Well, uh, so uh, he pecks down on you and causes you some discomfort. Uh, I think that'll. Yep. That's, that's the move. Uh, but while he's pecking down on you, you take the opportunity to swing up on him. Uh, and, and you zap him with your storm hammer. But uh, he seems unfazed. Um, and he, uh, yeah, he swoops down and grabs you. So he's got a hold of you with his uh, claw on your arm that has your shield in it. Okay. So, from over on the other island, uh, the visage that is not a half or all of a sudden disappears into a cloud of smoke and reappears right in front of the wrecked campfire here amidst you all and without wasting what? any time uh gets involved in this battle with you so what will you do good sir well, you mess with me because now I've now I'm way too close. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, look, is this better if you're over here? Yeah, there we go. Give me there. All right. So appearing at the shoreline is uh, the mysterious, the other mysterious stranger. Well, I'm going to appear on the shoreline, 
pull out my longbow and well I've already headed out, but I'll fire a shot. Nah. Of course I miss. Well, there's my I guess the movement's one or two actions and then the shot's another, so I guess that'd probably be the end of it. Well no, that that movement's free. Okay. I just uh moved you with the uh, you know plot movement. Gotcha. Well, now that I'm this close. You did, what do they call that in Harry Potter? You disapparated. Hmm. Right, well, I'm going to use my last two, I guess, to uh, cast Acid Arrow. Why not? I mean, keep in mind, you haven't formally joined these guys. Yeah, fair you, enough. You could be a villain here. Who are you, who are you casting <laughs> Acid Arrow on? I'll cast it on that uh, the big bird. The one that's frightened, or... Yeah, the no. one uh, to the north. The one oh, who's engaged with uh, the one that's got him whatever. Gotcha. Oh, he's got him grabbed too, eh? Yeah, that one's got him grabbed. Yeah. You know, I'll aim for the one at the south then, because that one will probably be getting. Doesn't, don't want him to get too big of a hit on his AC. Okay. Or does that matter if he's grabbing a character? Does increase his AC or what? No, I don't think so. I don't think it does anything. Okay, well, I'll keep it on the same one then. And uh, if I've used an attack action with a bow, is this is it a map hit to use a spell? I don't know how that works. Uh, yeah, because it's an attack action. Okay. Hmm. It's got that tag, attack tag. All right. Well, I don't want to do that then. <laughs> so I'll fire the first shot. And they'll say. You guys, you, you guys are uh, look like you could use a hand. And then for Drez, I will give you I'll walk over to you, touch you uh, if, <laughs> if you don't freak out when I come and touch you. And I'll give you a true strike. Depends entirely upon where you're touching. <laughs> <laughs> You're you're walking over to him and touching him. Yeah, I believe true strike. I just gotta check and make sure it's a touch spell. New with the spells. Well, I think it's only you. Oh, really? I, I can't give that to anyone else. I don't think you can put it on somebody else. No. Damn it! It's a glimpse into the future. Yeah, true strike is just. On yourself, you can only use okay. it. Okay, well then I'm just gonna give myself mage you can armor. Still walk over there and touch him, though. <laughs> Instead of that, I'll just give myself mage armor. Plus one to my AC. All right. I don't I think I did it already. Perfect. So. Uh, this bird right here wastes no time chomping down on the closest thing to it, which is West. However, he is able to jump out of the way, which infuriates this thing, and it tries to swipe at him. He does success for his life at him, damaging him, grabbing him. What the hell? Just kick me out? Did you get bumped out? I'll walk back in. Uh oh. Alright, so. Uh, Wes's turn here. He is grabbed. 
So I guess the first thing you want him to do is try to break out of being grabbed, you know? Yeah. I guess he could just try to move the flat chair. I always forget like what it is to get unbrowned. You know. It's a flat check just to do anything. Flat check just to walk away, move away. Oh, for the two. This his grab will be a twenty. Ooh, twenty-three. Let's see if he can do it. White. So. Uh, he tries to wrestle for you, but he can't. So he is just going to hunt prey on this thing. So that's what he would do. That was here. And, hmm. I guess he's just going to try to hit it with his free hand. Anyway, he didn't do the flat track. Alright, so Wes didn't do much of anything except get it set as his hunted prey. Uh, Sir Derwin, you can attempt a fortitude save to get free of this creature. It is a DC 23. Okay. DC 23, sorry, flat track. Okay. Nope. I'm going to plus the plus the roll or yeah. Click your fortitude. In there. Oh, sorry, fortitude save. Yeah, because you got plus twelve. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Close. I'm going to strike at it with my hammer. Like, at its claws, uh, where it's grabbing me. Alright, and... That's it. I don't want to... Ah, let's go for another fling at it. Alright. Oops, that's... Alright. Yeah, I will do that recovery check right now. Nope. Damn it. I believe you still have yourself targeted. Oh, yep. Yeah. Alright, so... How would you save these guys? Um, one sec. Mm. Red hit didn't let me go. Hey, Mary, w with this work on, I guess, creatures that can't speak, like. Would I just do some other like perform type of performance like Bon Mott here? Say that again now. It would it let you? I, um, would Bon Mott um work on these creatures? Like I know they can't speak, right? So is there like an alternative like thing I can do instead of speaking to them? Oh yeah, I mean playing music. 
you already established that's effective with them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, so the so so I roll um performance instead of diplomacy against their will DC. Yeah. Okay. Minus three to perception and will saves. Okay. Then next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to use um let's see, one of the small targets, one creature. And I'm gonna use a uh, kinetic ram. On the the north, uh, the north bird, and I'm gonna use two actions. All right. Okay. No, sorry, sorry, not kinetic ram. Um, I take that back. Uh, I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna use AOE fear. Sorry. Okay. So you're targeting both of them? Yep. Alright, so we both go to And uh, that should be three actions. They are all scared. Um, Riz, you can attempt to get free of this thing, or you could try to uh, run away from this thing. Wait, I, I'm not caught by anything, am I? Oh, yeah, I thought you were rest for a second, my boy. No. I'm going to, uh... You try to kill these things, or run away from these things. I'm going to move over here on the other side of the tent. And I'm going to attempt to hide. They, uh, even though they have a hold of these things, they are still pretty aware of what's going on, and that tent is destroyed, so we do remain nameless. Fucking birds. So, you got one more? Yeah, let's see. Alright, I am just going to, I think, try to get myself where I will be positioned for some melee damage next turn. So I'm going to move right over here. Alright. So, uh, the first thing this thing does is it actually lets go, uses an action here. Let's go of um, Dusk Slayer. And, uh, and it flaps right over to you, Grizz. And it looks for some sweet, sweet rations. I think it recognizes you as the person that first gave them rations. And it tries to pick you. 
Well, that's not the way to get rations. You have to ask nicely. Uh, you're able to jump out of the way, and it infuriatedly pecks at you again. Critical miss. Uh, this time, though, you were waiting for it, and you swipe at it with your dagger, take it, hit at it. Sure, I got it targeted this time. Yeah, I thought there were no um, negative effects for doing a critical miss on an attack. If someone, unless I'm wrong. Wrong. Well, just happened. <laughs> you miss. Anyway, so uh, Dress tries to take advantage of the situation, but. Uh, Unfortunately, fails to do so. Uh, with that, the mysterious sorcerer takes another turn. I don't know if I want to just start hammering these guys with everything I got, or hold back because I don't know. You guys. Honestly, you should because um. <laughs> We can only move like two tiles per day and we're gonna rest anyway, so I wouldn't worry too much about your um your uh you know spells per day count. I have been wanting to try this guy out. Okay, well I'm going to cast fireball. Yeah, let's go. Cast it right here. So that'll get both of them and none of you guys in it. Um, you gonna cast it then? Um, here? In between? I need both of them to do a TC 22 reflex save. But why are you casting me? Oh, what? So that one jumps out of the way. That one does as well, right, so, so it takes success. Uh, one of them yes. takes half damage. So one of them takes half damage, right? Because yeah. it's a uh, reflex. Oh, I was muted. Yeah, one of them takes half damage. Right. Oh. Ouch. Not very good rolls. Uh, this one that still has a hold of West hollers and screams. From the sudden bursts of flames. No one terrified by that. <laughs> Alright, that's and the reaction. I, will, right? or is that I believe two? that's just two. So I'll move 30 feet as well. Sorry, 25 feet at least of my other game. So I'll move to there. And that's my actions. Got this bird uh, that just got burned. Let's go west. Let's go west. And begins to move.
Alright, what you guys want us to do? Can we do as a regular combo on the, the north? The north bird? Yeah. Yes, Brigham. All right, let's see. Let me try. Let's see. Let's do two attacks. Oh, I Wait. Wait. I'm at nimble that, dodge. Is that Chesty? That's being targeted. That Drez targeted too. Hold on, let me clear the let me clear my palette. Yeah. No, we we'll know how that would go down. Alright, take two. Alright, everybody who says, I'm not going to attack with a map penalty, there you go. <laughs> so the first shot flies wildly, second shot lands right into this thing's neck. And he screams out in pain. Out of nowhere, uh, he commands... Strigan to swoop in with a Talon attack. Wow. And he takes advantage of this thing's uh, confusion. It scratches its eyes. Only one may dominate the skies. All right, Sir Dust Slayer. All right, I move right up behind it so it's flanking. Yeah. And uh, attack with it. Attack it. My storm hammer. Nice. Critical hit. Nice. So you smack this thing, and it sizzles and pops, crackles, spraying into the You got an action? Yeah. yeah, and I'm going to do another attack on it. So while it's still disoriented from the first attack, you swing down again and uh, ring its bell one more time. Proving your worth to your new final adventuring party. Still believing it. Oh, right. What do you do, sir? I'm going to... Shut. Yeah. Okay. Oh, damn it. Okay. This is what I'll do. I'll, um, I'm going to move here. So that's, that's two actions, because 35 feet. And I'm going to use... Uh... Oh, wait. No, fuck. Oh, can I take that back? I made a mistake. Fuck. Shit. Um. 
I don't know. What can I do? I'll attack it. I'm going to use, uh... I'm going to use Electric Arc. Let me target it. Oh shit, was that right? Uh, reflex save. Yeah. Damn it, alright. It takes half to Uh, so I have one more turn. Uh, what's that? Sorry? So did you roll the damage first? Yeah, I rolled the damage first. That was my accident. So you can just half that, I guess. Yeah. Then next turn, I'm going to... My next action, I'm going to move to here. Okay, and I'm done. Let's do kill select, if you please. Make sure you do that. Uh, seeing as how he is flanked now. Will you preserve attempt. nature, or will you kill this innocent creature? Get attacked first, it's no longer innocent. Striking with the dagger of venom. Uh, I think it has to crit in order for it to poison. But I am going to attempt to follow up with a map penalty strike with the Cinder Claw Gauntlet. So you are unsuccessful as you try to pummel this thing with your other three hands. Uh, all right. How uh, how big are these things? What's their size? Huge. Stupid huge things. All right, I am going to attempt to create a diversion. Uh, I'm going to pretend like I am throwing some rations, much as one pretends to throw a ball for a dog, but doesn't actually throw it, uh, which I'm assuming is going to be a gesture. Uh, that would be like deception. Deception. <laughs> yeah, deception, sure. Yeah. And so I have done that. You're trying to do what now? Like fake like you're throwing a ration? Fake like you're throwing ration and hide. That's what you're trying to do. Mary, you're muted if you're talking. Thank you. You're gonna try. You're gonna throw the ration and hide. That's what you're doing. No, I pretended to throw a ration to create a diversion. Okay. And. and uh, it's successful, so you're just hiding them? Yeah, I guess I, apparently I am hidden to this here bird. Alright. That's your last action? Yeah, that's all I got. Right. 
so you are a nervous by the sun once more. Um, so, this thing in bad shape uh, begins to flee. Mr. Vora once more. Alright. Well, just for fun, as he's running away, I'm going to use my swift action to dispel my weapon. And I'm going to fire one shot at one A range increment outside. So what is that, a minus two or something to my attack? You're going to fire, say that again, I couldn't hear you too. Sorry, I'm going to uh, use my swift action to bespell my weapon with the last spell that was in it. So it adds one D6 of fire damage if it hits. Okay. And then I'm going to fire... I guess do I have line of sight in that, or is it through the trees? I probably can't even see him now. Eh? You can see him, yeah. I mean, it's through the trees, but you can see him. Okay, well, I will... And they've just, like, barreled through there, so they may know the hole, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so for my first action, then I'll cast True Strike on myself. So I get to roll twice and choose the better. And then I'll fire at it one in range increment outside of my range increment. Hold on, I can put True Strike on. Pardon me? I can put the effect of True Strike on you, so you shouldn't, it should just do, it should just oh, nice. do. Let me know when I'm good to go. You good? Alright, let's roll. I've only rolled one. Roll a second one then. Yeah, roll it again. No, I there's an effect if it doesn't do it. No, there it goes. There it went. Yeah. Okay. All right. Deal my damage, and I gotta add one d6 of fire as well. That was on which one? The northern one? Yeah, the north one. Alright, so with a splash, it flops into the water. Then. And that's all of my actions. So, with his uh, patriot dead, and this one just continues to flee and successfully uh, flaps off into the distance, which means this encounter uh, means in success. <laughs> so, you all find yourselves around this puddled, muddled camp. Um, to you guys who just joined the party, who are already at level 6, uh, let's see what this encounter will do. 
I was gonna say just stay at level six because these guys are almost there. So we might just be able to all give it the same way over here and we'll see. It's two. Uh, yeah, so this would give you 160 XP for defeating or making flee the Quetzalcoatl Terrarosaurus. Which would put everybody at, uh, what, 1,000 and, uh, 120 into level 6? Is that right? And 160, yeah, 120 into level 6. So for you guys that just joined the party, you'd be at 120 into level 6. For you three, you will be also at 120 points in the level six. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Full path builder here. Uh. So. 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 If you pull up path builder, well, and I don't know. I guess if you've got the character made all the way to 20, this this might not work. But there's a new mod I got in if at the top of your character sheet. It says Path Muncher. And if you click that, you can go on Path Builder and you can get a uh, that ID for the JSON. And you can just have it imported straight into the game. But like I said, if you got him at level 20 built all the way out, I guess that's not a good idea because then it'll make you level 20. <laughs> all built out but if you wanted to do like a truncated version for doing that on the fly you could do that oh, yeah. I, don't how, I don't know how it works i don't know if it lets you yeah it doesn't it, i guess it does doesn't it let you set your build at a certain level to see it at a certain level yeah so if you did that and then you go in the menu and you click export json it gives you a little the six digit number and if you click that path muncher thing and you put that six digit number in it should just pull all your shit in i did it earlier and it worked pretty sweet that's how i made uh the vega it's a sweet I, little uh yeah dude i think it's kind of new addition. there's only two versions of it but it's sick as fuck <laughs> Save so much time, which is, I mean, that's the best. <laughs> Those are the best mods. Yeah, I was on here for an hour on Wednesday. I know, dude. I wish I'd have knew. I wish I would have known about it. Ah, oh, it's fine. Yeah, it would have saved you so much time. Uh, so. As you guys are collecting yourselves, uh, these orcs make their way over and they just begin thanking you profusely for uh, fixing their camp or for defending their camp, I should say. And they start kind of fixing their camp here, uh, trying to set everything back right and seeing what they can salvage from where these creatures were. Uh, pecking and attacking here uh they inform you that you know they were out here uh not not looking to get involved with some you know huge flying monsters as it were um but they were actually uh out here uh searching a far more dangerous quarry and they begin to explain to you that, you know, not everything out here in the forest is a natural being. And that what they were hunting was a uh, shape-shifting being from the celestial planes. They don't really want to tell you more than that, but, uh, you know, they, they seem very serious when they're in Samba, when they're talking about it. Um... 
they're more than willing to, you know, mark your map and let you go check where they were going to check before uh, all this happened. While they stay here and begin, you know, building back their camp. Uh, they tell you, you know, that's exactly the proposal they were about to offer to uh, Vega and Sir Dust Slayer before all this uh, kind of craziness broke out. They tell you that they had met them both in this awful place and they were surprised as they are to be meeting you guys and uh, they were gonna you know fork out some gold if they could help them achieve their quarry I do you like gold um i asked them if um they can mark the location on the map and um any relevant details that might help us uh go after this creature Uh, well, so they begin to tell you of a being that can shapeshift. Uh, they tell you that, you know, when you first approach it, it will look like a, uh, you know, normal you know, human being or elf, uh, whatever guise it happens to take. Uh, but that that's not its true form, and not to trust it, that, you know, whatever it says is lies, and it's just going to do whatever it can to deceive you that's like their you know whole purpose is to trick and cause havoc and despair to humans which part of the map is it on um and they've marked your map to uh, to a, at a spot uh to the north of the... okay well i guess you can point yeah. that out where... yeah, when you're when you're on the map it'll It'll be apparent. <laughs> It'll be apparent to you. I'll show you. I uh, I go up to to Vega and ask him, "Thank you for the help." Um, I'm just wondering what you're doing here in the jungle. You seem far away from home. Always far away from home. I've uh, spent most of my time out searching for new magical things that can I can increase my power with I hear tell from these guys that someone out here has activated one of uh, the old elf gates yeah. I, I dar I, we, I, I'm just gonna call it an elf gate because I hate saying our dara or whatever the fuck they're called <laughs> I miss one influence point <laughs> <laughs> Oridara, Aridara, I don't know. I mispronounce everything they've got written on these APs. <laughs> yeah, when I saw some people in help, I figured, or saw some people over there trying to fight these guys that scared us away from our camp, I figured I'd help out. Um, you have an opportunity here to, you know, speak also to these half orcs, uh, to their leader, if y'all, uh, you know. If you have any questions about what they may know about the, uh, you know, the forest or the jungle, as it were. In addition to your new party members, which is Lila Glass. I, I tell them that uh, my party was the one that activated the elf gate. We're here um, in, in search of the Cinderclaw cultists to, to stop their plans and shut down the dragon totems um are you are, are you aligned with any any group is that for me or for the orcs uh, well, that was for you um i'm just aligned with myself right now i have uh we've come across a couple of i don't know like let's call it and becoming people that we've had to fight on our way here. I don't I don't know of what cult they're part of. I have heard of the Cinder Claws in these areas, though I've been traveling through here for the last six months or so. You uh you not gonna question the one that looks like a Cinder Claw over here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time since I've seen a kobold warrior fighting alongside of uh well, anyone, really. What's your deal, buddy? 
Uh, I was I was told by the priest of Toreg that there is a great evil coming here. Oh, what the hell? Oh, nighttime. <laughs> uh, coming here, and I was sent out to destroy these dragon pillars. Destroy the dragon pillars? I thought you being a dragon, you'd... You would like the dragon pillars. No, they are of evil descent, and I am here to rid of the evil dragons. Well, so, <clears throat> as a uh, as a small little campfire is built here for um, you all, you, you gather around it, and you all share stories of these dragon pillars, um, and you all determine that however you were set about to find them that you should destroy them and at the talk of dragon pillars the half orc hunters start to come clean with you a little bit more and they tell you that they know a little bit about them and they tell you that not too long ago they encountered some cinder claws themselves and they learned of the fortress that is just northeast of or yeah northeast of here which is protected by the dragon pillars that the different colors contribute to a magical shield that is protecting uh, the cinder claw fortress it's magic that they don't normally have and they've never had before but they seem to have learned from the scarlet triad uh, as to what the Scarlet Triad is, these guys can't tell you. Uh, they're just as confused as you are as to who or what may be uh, behind their presence in the Milwaukee Expanse. <clears throat> so this is another location that they've shared with you to the north. East, directly northeast, is... That's all spot, right? Huh? Was that spot with the bubble on it? Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, but the spot where the Kishi has gone, the creature that they told you is a shape-shifting entity, that's far to the north, back across the river. But you, you'll you know about both places. I can show you in the maps. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I, uh, I asked the orc leader if it's okay if we could uh, rest here for the night. Then we can head out in the morning. Uh, one of the orc says uh, that's fine with them as long as you'll be the little spoon. It's been a while since they camped with a goblin. Can I do a society check to see what I know about the uh, Scarlet Triad? Or is that yeah, a thing? you can try for sure. In a kit. <laughs> what do you want? It's not that bad. Uh, no, you do. You do have some knowledge. Uh, that is actually. I think we have the quest log in this. The room. Hold on a second here. Uh, so, you have heard about the leader of the Cinder Claws, a person named Belmazog, and from Boz's journal, you heard about someone named Laslin, and both of these people, <coughs> excuse me, both of these people, uh, in both instances, had promised something to someone they were basically you know exerting like extreme influence on them um and let's see uh yeah 
they also, uh, the correspondence that Vaz had came from a place called Kedapesh, which I believe is a city down here in the Milwaukee Experience. I think we looked at that. Um, while this is all happening, I am treating wounds on myself and Will. Okay. Uh, let me see uh, if I can make this. I think I can make the macro. Yeah, so we'll. And since I have a ward medic feat, I can do both of us at the same time. And only for 10 minutes. And, um, sorry, the refresh rate is 10 minutes, not an hour as well, with a different feat. Okay. Who are you, who, who are you just here? Uh, well, because I know both of us are down. You guys can camp here with these orc, orc orcs. Um, is there any other actions y'all want to do before you go 99? Well, I cast the dancing lights, I guess, to hang around us for a while. Because mm -hmm. I can't see shit. Sure. I don't know how to actually make it show light, but... How many lights does it do? You have to roll to see how many lights it is. Uh, I believe it just lets me do three of them. I'll click the button again. You create up to four floating lights. Yeah, I just kind of scatter them outside of the twenty feet outside the fire, so we got a little lit up area. jumped in the middle of the night we could see it coming So, 
Uh, let's see, we'll have, uh, let's see here, we'll have a survival team. Guys, camp through the night, being awake, resting. Okay. <clears throat> um, in the morning, I'm going to treat wounds both Will and I again. I think we both are still down a bit. Oh no, he is, and I'm not. Uh, are you talking about Wes? Yeah. No, he's, I saw that he is, but... He's, he's at full home. Yeah. So, um, you guys are uh, able to continue about your way in the jungle. You can stay here in this camp and do it and chill. Uh, let's uh get back to the main map i guess so I, saw map. You cheat. I saw you cheat that one hp i think i'm not paying attention <laughs> <laughs> You're a fun, you're a paladin, dude. That's you're lawful. That's why good. I did. You're lawful good, bro. Yeah, I did treat medicine on myself. Yeah, you added six. Oh, sorry. Paladin. I was seventy-two from the Let me night. Make sure. Let me make I was... sure your alignment's right. Yeah, lawful good. <laughs> okay. Okay, oh, I have I'll, that right. I'm sorry. All right. Yeah. No. I, I just. All right. And did everybody right. do what the rest for the night? Yeah. 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 All right. So, let's go here. You are here in the jungle, traveling mode once more. Can everybody see? Yeah. Okay, so to the northeast, right here, this is where they told you the fortress protected by the Dragon Pillar spells is. Alright. To the north of you is where they told you you could find the thing that they're hunting. Right here. And that helps. Okay. Right. Our boat, and our boat is on this tile, right? Your boat is on that on that tile, yes, right okay. there. All right. What do you guys want to do? Maybe go back to the boat because we. I know last week you guys were trying to find what the bubble was, but now we're since we know what the bubble is and we can't get into it because it's shield. Yeah. Should we go back? Cross up the lake. Yeah, we could go or like we could check out these open spaces as well. There might yeah. be something in them. Um, possibly more dragon totems. What do you guys think? I'm yes. down with whatever. Where you want to go? To the boat up here. I think we're trying to decide if we should uh, explore like south of the river first before going up north. Let's just make a big long round about back to the boat then. That'll yeah, be we... one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, yeah, we could go like, yeah, we could go through these tiles yeah. and go around, maybe. So so we don't so we. 
Because uh, we, we'll need to destroy all the dragon totems anyway, and then that's probably going to save us time in the long run if we yeah. just explore the rest of the bottom yep. area. So let's go down one. I guess let's go here and then here. Yeah. Is that cool with everyone? Yeah. Oh? Oh. <laughs> Not bad. All right, so. Hold on, I can fix that. So, uh, you guys move just south of the fortress you were told about. And do you want to, what do you want to do in this time? I will search. To see, so uh, well, what do you you just want to look in general? Yeah, in general. For some specific, okay. And then someone can investigate, and someone can scout. Uh, I will investigate. So, Neji, you uh, look around and you don't notice anything out of the ordinary, although you do see that there is a path through here that looks like it was used recently. There's not, there's not a lot of, you know, overgrowth on the path. Which direction is the, uh, or the... It goes, uh, kind of north to the east, like north and south. And oh, okay. Exits out, like there's a little, uh, clearing. Where you're, where you're moving your cursor there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right here. Yep. Uh, but you don't find anything other than... There is a path, I think. So, do you guys want to scout ahead? With you want Wes to scout? That's probably what he'd be doing. Um, which. Was it investigate that required like recall knowledge? Uh, investigate. Yeah, I think it is recall knowledge. It'd probably be best to get West to to do that, right? Because he has recall knowledge nature at a high level. Uh, I mean, I guess what do you want to do? Uh, just general tracks or something. Yeah, general useful things like uh, clues, tracks, or weapons on the ground, stuff like that. So, uh, Wes investigates the path that you found um, looking to see what he can find and he notices that the most recent set of footprints seems to be five individual creatures uh, four that are similar and one that is uh, different um, smaller but seemingly in charge because it was leading the other four and they passed through here uh, probably not more than a day or so ago direction they went um, they went off the trail to the northwest Uh, 
All right. Did we get any? Did we get anything from scouting? Uh, well, who do you want to scout? Um, anyone else? Or, or <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I can do it, or we can send Wes to do it. it uh, I don't think it's all right. Uh, uh, No, he would just get a plus one on that initiative in the next square unit. I mean, you're supposed to move at half speed, so if you do it at the beginning, you can only move one hex, I think. But it's in front of or behind you, so it's in this one or any of these that you go to. So, nothing jumping out at you, attacking you other, otherwise at the moment. What will you do? Uh, I guess move to the next tile here. Yeah. Here? Yeah. And let's have uh, the same people do the same thing again. Yeah, I'm not much for scouting, that's for sure. guys are able to see that the path continues along here but nothing else is out of the ordinary okay um i guess we have to set up camp now right uh you do need to find a place to set up camp yes or, or at least a place to uh uh rest for some amount of time before you can go much further I mean, you can continue, but you would be fatigued if you got into anything. Alright, um, I guess let's find a good spot here and, uh, set up camp. You want yeah. Wes to roll for the camp? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll be back in a few, sorry. Sorry. Well, so let's all take a break you know, while he's doing that. How about that? Yeah, that works. I'll be right back. All right. Me too. I'm going to use the bathroom. Be right back.
I'm back. Everyone went on a five minute break. Yeah. Oh, okay. we're getting coming back. Yeah. I'm back. I'm right back. I'm back. Who's back? Everybody back? Uh, I think Derek's not. Who's Derek? Vega. I only know Vega. How are you in all these campaigns and you don't roll play? What does that mean? Dude? I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't know. know. I, I may have to get, like get a couple apps, uh sessions in, and then I can. I don't know. I'm not very good at put it, being put on the spot. Got you. You got. You got to see where it goes. Yeah. You have to get to know your own character. And, and also being jumped right in, I don't really know even the backstory of everything that's happening so far. You're in the jungle, bro. <laughs> Welcome to the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> and that British one, we don't really roleplay whatsoever. It's more we do this, that, attack. We're, well. You said we're British in a, one? What do you mean? Uh, the people I play like earlier in the day on Sundays, uh, they're all from uh, Britain. What in which campaign is that? What's uh, that's Age of, I mean, sorry, Abomination Vaults. Oh, that's the Vaults. I got you. Yeah. yeah. Are they all mid maxes or what? Just like Back moving along so we can battle kind of thing? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Um, they play this, and I think some of them play a uh, one e one e campaign as well. well. That's dope. Yeah, I need to get in with these guys, bro. Well, after Abomination Vaults, I'm trying. We're the GM is thinking about going to Foundry, and I'm like, yes, please do. Because roll twenty is not nice. I, I don't do, like it. I'm trying to set up like some semblance of the old school Ravenloft, but in Pathfinder two, right now. But I, but then I keep being like, man, it'd be dope just to play the old school like Ravenloft, like for real. Like when yeah. We, but then I'm like, maybe no, nah, that wouldn't be awesome either, because that of <laughs> Anyway. What would be awesome is Abomination Vault. Got that book sitting right here on my dresser, bro. And I got the foundry. I got the, the whole special thing. Man. Uh, you back, Derek? Yeah, I'm here. All right, word. So, you guys set up camp for the evening. Um, let's see here. Oop. Night falls. Y'all get tucked in. Snoozing. Nice and snoozily. Um, when all of a sudden, you are awakened. Let's see here. Let me make sure you're awake correctly. You? Yeah. Alright, it should work. Uh, you are awakened. That was the wrong thing. Yeah. In the middle of the night, by a fearsome pack of foes who seem to have been tracking you for quite some time, 
as they knew exactly when to strike when you were most vulnerable. So, roll for combat. As the kids say. little guys do come bearing torches uh, giving off some light so you can see that there are five of them can tell because you have all in some capacity fought these creatures before tell that they are some form of boggard led by a quite fearsome looking uh, charupa surprise these guys um, and none more surprising than this little Charuka although he looks like all the other somewhat uh, easily defeated Charukas that you have fought uh, this one wait a minute that's the face of the wrong way this one opens up his mouth and let's loose a cone of fire at all of you. So, you four here in the front, as it were, roll a. Uh, well, let me just oh. do this. Roll, reflex? Yep, reflex. Are we going off the red part or the outline? Because if it's the red part, I'm not a part of it. Okay. All right, so you all are nimble enough and awake enough to uh, dodge out of the way of the worst. But you all get a little singed. And you are now fully awake. So, with that, uh, he just shrieks like you've never heard anything shriek before. Uh, and you can tell that this is not just a normal Charuka cry, and he becomes quick. Dress. How will you respond? Uh, will you make this little guy right here flat-footed for me? Which one is that? That one right there. So I am swiftly going to move through the darkness 
to where he is. Make sure that I have him targeted and lash out with the dagger of venom. That done. He croaked. Ow, a terrible croak. Yeah, you croak, bitch. You croak like you're about to croak. And then with my last action, I just disappear back into the darkness. Well, that was pretty straightforward. Uh, so. companion here seeing what's just happened uh, let's see where he is so, his companion seeing what just happened Hops through the darkness and lashes out at Ugris with his tongue. Did he not bring his torch with him? He is not lit up like the other ones. No. Uh, he misses, however, and you just end up doing slobbering. Thank Okay, I'm going to uh, linger in composition, inspire courage. Uh, performance. Then I have uh, two more actions. What should I do? Does that hit everybody that can hear? Does it hit all the uh, all the uh, all the enemies too? The inspire courage. Yeah, does it inspire them? No, it's just your teammates. Yeah, okay. well, that doesn't seem you inspire fair yourself all. and your allies. Well, that doesn't seem fair at all. <laughs> well, it's their fault. Their fault for not having a, a goblin bard in their party, you know. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cast uh, an AOE fear on the the group of four here. Fear. Yeah. Um, I don't think, hit, I don't think it's not going to hit uh, the this guy, right? No, probably won't. Uh, a target five. I mean, they don't have to be together. Do they? It's just target five creatures. Yeah. Okay. Well, all of them then. Target. It must attempt to will save. Yeah. This is target by creatures range 30 feet. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> Get fucked. Oof. So these guys are super scared and fleeing. And then Fireball. Oh, well, first things first, I'll cast my true strike. So if you could add true strike to me, and then I'm gonna fireball those guys. Oh, I guess never mind. There, there isn't even a fucking attack for a fireball, is there? Never mind, no true strike. Okay. <laughs> I'll just cast fireball on them. It's a reflex save for those. On crit, crit. Ah. So they all scream in pain as they are engulfed in flames momentarily. Alright. Well, I guess I've got one more action left. So I will just cast Mage Armor on myself. That'll be all three of my actions. This little guy is fleeing, so he will do just that. You can fire that breath weapon, I can fire it right back at you. And I'm going to do cobalt breath. And it would be a 30 line cone. Yeah, it would hit both of them. Sorry, 30 foot line. Well, yeah, you can do a 30 foot line or a 15 foot cone. Yeah. But a 15 foot um, cone. Would each different color actually has a uh, it tells you which one it has to be because oh, really? this is yeah so yours is a line yeah mine's a line and it's uh 30 foot because oh. it's a uh, will be electrical damage each creature must attempt basic Just 
focus damage. Fortitude save? I mean, reflex save then? See if it's half? Uh, what's your spell DC? It's 22. Yeah. So your name is the same as your level DC, so yeah. Just, just these two is a one of them, right? Yeah. So you you step up and let out a mighty roar, followed by a puny nope. little stream of flames, but it's enough to oh. kill the bugger in the back. It, it's a le electrical it's, light lightning, I guess. Oh, oh it, electrical, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. A puny little lightning bolt. It it's, a co it's a cobalt thing, right? Yeah. Well, when it goes up, it'll. When I level up more, it'll go up more. Ooh, that make fun. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> oh, wow. And uh, the name of the the skill looked cool. Sounded cool. <laughs> yeah, dude. So is that? Yeah, for you, you got one. Yeah, one. Uh, that, no, the cold bolt breath is two actions. Alright. What do you guys want Wes to do? Is, um, is Wes hidden from, from, uh, from these, these enemies right now? He's or not. No? He could be. Okay. Um. Get him to hunt prey and shoot the... Yeah, can, can we have him stealth and then um, do his combo without Strigan attacking? That should be three actions, right? Yeah. You can have him hide. Okay, so let's have him hide and then um, he's able to stealth attack the, uh, the leader. Uh, he is unnoticed by the Oof, this is going to hurt if it hits.
So, he, having already freaked out and, uh, you know, empowered himself, um, runs out here, taking a quickened action. And jumps amongst you all. Um, and he slams his fist into the ground, screeching once more, um, causing you all to have to do a reflex save. So go ahead and do a reflex save. Okay, we're going. Alright, so you all remain steady on your feet, uh, but you take a few points of damage from uh, volcanic cinders that are flying up through the ground at this moment because of this little guy. Some kind of Baruch or dragon magic. So that's his turn. He just opened up small little volcanic rifts all over the place. Reds. What are you there? So. Alright, so I'm targeting this little bastard standing here beside me. Okay. And I am going to attempt tumble through or tumble behind whatever they call it here okay I think you can target it now yeah there you go so you move through yep, I'll be behind him now and that will put him flat footed and so now he shall taste the venom of my dagger. And if he's still alive, he will be poisoned? Alright, so in a flash, in the darkness, you whip around this thing and you coolly and calmly insert your dagger into his back. He goes all the way through his body, pierces his heart, and he falls dead at your feet. Aren't those dudes like level two? I remember them from <laughs> the previous battles. Alright, final action. I target the dragon priest over here. I attempt to demoralize him by shouting at him, You're next, bitch! Okay. Uh, he doesn't understand that terminology. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm going to um, do a performance demoralize on them. Okay. Alright, this effect. 
Was that a crit? No. Okay. Okay. Uh, then. What should I do next here? Hmm. And I'm going to do... Hmm. I'm going to do Electric Arc. All right. And that should be it for my turn. Alright, and as it passes to Vega, the sun breaks through the jungle canopy. It must have been just before dawn when they attacked, and the sun is rising. Oh, Vega. Well, that's because I want to have some fun with this new character. I'll take... Yeah, let's target check. Move right up next to this guy. And then I'm going to cast Shocking Grasp on him. A melee attack, I guess. Oh, hold on a second. I don't have the little blood mod. What the fuck? It should be blood mod. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to figure out why it's not working. Okay, so yes, that was a hit. So, damage him. And this guy's got a lot of health. Sorry about mute. Is he wearing metal armor by chance? If he's wearing metal armor, I get an extra 1d4 persistent electricity damage if he is wearing anything metal armor. Tells you the answer. To me. Is that three? You got one more. Fucking grass was two or three. So yeah, moving was one. The spell was two. So that's the end of, end of my turn. All right, so.
took him out by accident. You know. um, all right, so this guy over here comes to his senses um, and tries to re-enter the fray. It's just on the outskirts of the fight here now. Here goes Slayer. Okay. I am... I'm going to move up five feet and attack my hammer. Ooh, nice. Priest uh, falls underneath your hammer and his head splatters on the ground. Great. Right. Uh, next move will be just to move right up to the other frog creature. Unpray shoot. Unpray shoot striggan attack. Uh Huntpray on this thing. it to the ground and with that combat ends successfully yeah and you all will see 80 XP for surviving this ambush of this patrol we're at 200 ooh that guy has a plus one striking longsword So, uh, with that, I would say this is probably a good place to stop. You can just hit about 12 here. Um, you guys uh, will be able to continue from this point as if you know you have completed the rest here. You just won't get the benefits of actually having rested, but you can travel two more spaces in the jungle. Is what I mean. But yes, you can loop whatever this Charuka is holding, which is not much leather armor and a plus one striking longsword. Or you can leave it to rot to the jungle. Well, it's worth 100 gold pieces, we may as well just keep it. Yeah. Can't really use it, but if you guys want to give her. All right. All right. So we'll pause it right there. And we'll come back to the jungle map. Uh, I gotta say, I like this uh, this party comp right now. It's really good. Me too, it's got a little bit of everything. So, to be continued from here, next time, uh, yeah, you guys will be able to travel two more hexes. So, plan accordingly. No metagaming, no cheating. 
We're going this way, right? These two axes. The two clearings, I guess. Cool. Right on. Sounds like a point. Oh, good game, fellas. Yeah, GG, guys. GG. All right, GG. Thanks, Mary. Thank you, guys. Yep, I'll see you guys. Uh, we on for Outlaws this week, right? Yep. Wednesday. Let's do it. All right. All right.